Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Penovich here. Let's do an update on Lee. Told you it'd be a little bit later today for the vlog. I'm actually traveling. I'm actually at a weather conference of all places. So this week is going to be a lot of talk about weather and geeky stuff, but I'm sure Lee will be a big topic of conversation. So you might see me kind of pull some other meteorologists, some experts in the field to talk about this storm. But let me focus on what's happening today. You know, so last night we had rapid intensification overnight. Um, actually, instead of getting stronger, a little bit of shear happened. So let me quickly show you what happened here. Uh, you notice the western side here is a little bit asymmetrical. It looks much more together here. What's happening is southwesterly shear, which is just wind changing direction with height, is affecting the, the west side of the storm. And that's kind of kind of making it a little bit weaker than it was you know, last night. It's not 165, it's 155. I mean, we're splitting hairs here. When we talk about weakening, we're still talking about a Category 4 storm, low-end Category 5. That doesn't look to fluctuate very much. In fact, if we zoom in and show you the closer view here, I'll show you. You can see the eye briefly disappeared, but it looks like now this afternoon we're starting to see it reappear. So don't get caught up in these minor fluctuations. We're going to see a lot of that. Really intense hurricanes cannot maintain peak intensity for a long time. They fluctuate quite a bit. It's like revving your engine up. The RPMs get so high, you can only stay there for a little bit, and then you got to back it back down, and then it's going to go back up. But that's kind of what you're going to see all the next five days. I don't expect to see it ever drop below a Category 4. So it is a potent, potent storm. Let's take a look at the forecast track again. This was the forecast track of eight, uh, at um, 11 a.m. Um, again, don't focus on the center line, even though it's here. Remember, in the long range, coming up here on Wednesday, the storm could be anywhere in here um, as we get into Wednesday morning. Now, the good news is if this were to progress forward, let's say moving up here, I'll just extend the cone a little bit. You can see the water temperatures up here are cooler. That's upwelling from Franklin and Idalia. So there is signs that it's probably not going to maintain category four or five strength forever. Um, I think the next five days, yes. But after that, there are signs it could weaken. And I'll show you the wider view here. And two things you're looking at here. The white dots are the National Hurricane Center forecast. So you can see all the way out here um, goes out to Wednesday morning. The, the red is the consensus track. You've heard me talk a lot about consensus track is really the way to go. It takes all of the guidance and converges it into one um, track. And usually the Hurricane Center is going to stay there. But the consensus track does go out further in time. So if we go out to Thursday, um, into Thursday night, you can see it weakening to a category three and then west of Bermuda, you know, as, as a cat two. But the thing to remember when you're looking at this is that's just a dot on the map. That's where the center could be. Remember, it could actually be anywhere in here. Um, and that still puts the East Coast at risk, but obviously Bermuda would be in really bad shape here because they're going to be on the east side of it. But that kind of shows you um, the direction it's going. Let's take a look at the super ensembles. I love this product. You know I do. I show it often because I just think it's such a great product. I'm going to move it up here so you can see it a little bit better. Um, actually, let me move. Let me move this whole thing so you can see it better. It's kind of different on my laptop here. Um, so we'll kind of show you what it looks like here. You see the the low to medium high down at the bottom here. All of the ensembles, and I'm going to grab my pen here. That's what you see me doing. All of the ensembles fall. Every single member falls within there, okay? But notice in the middle, that's where you have the highest probability of the storm going. Um, that's a moderate chance. You know, a lot of folks have commented on my page and saying, okay, the models are all over the place. They're actually not. These are the most consistent I have seen a, a, a forecast in a long time. And that, there's a lot of evidence that this is probably the most consistent long-range forecast we've seen for a tropical system, I think maybe ever. Now, it's continuing to move in that direction, and I'm going to just show you the last four runs because I think it's really important to show you this. Um, these are the last four runs of, actually more than that, all of the runs. I put them all on there. I forgot I clicked all of them. I'll move my head out of the way here. Uh, but you can see going all the way back to the second of the month. So you're going back, you know, five days, and you see all the runs here. And notice how consistently they've all been clustered together. For everyone saying the models are all over the place, they're not. People telling you that online, they're just lying to you. The models have been really consistent. What happens, I think, is people get caught up in individual little models, like one model here, one model there. If you look at the totality of them, and that's what we're doing, we're showing ensemble means, there has been very little change. And even though the hurricane hunters are out there now and were out there last night, we're likely going to see some changes in the next couple of days because the hurricane models will get better data from the hurricane hunters and those aircraft. But 
honestly, all in all, there's not been a lot of change in the guidance. I'm going to show you all the spaghetti plots here just so you can see them all at once uh, to kind of get a good view of them. So it, it, let's look at every single model, like everyone, right? And, and you know me, I'm the one, I'm going to show you everything. So many of these people I see on TikTok in particular and on Facebook are just, they, they pick one, one run of one single model and they just focus on like, oh my gosh, look at that, look at that. Folks, that's not where it's going. Look at where they all are. They're all clustered in the same spot, and they've been this way for days. There has not been any wild shifts west, any rogue models taking it into here or there. If that does happen, that's an outlier, and you throw it out. It's not something you look at. And when you're running simulations, you're going to have outliers. You look at the higher probability situation here, and you can see they're all aligned. Now, that being said, I mean, I'm not writing this off for the East Coast. That's the other thing. This is not a fish storm yet. We got to pay attention to it. Don't mistake the fact that I'm telling you there's no guidance showing it heading our way with, hey, we're in the clear. We're absolutely not in the clear at all. What I'm telling you is right now, all of the data is showing this. Think of it this way. Every one of us has used GPS, right? Okay. We all use GPS. If you've ever gone on a long trip with GPS, like I'm talking six, seven, eight, nine hour drive, like I go to Ohio or I'm going skiing out west or I'm going to Florida, you put in the address, right, at the start of the trip. It gives you a specific time of arrival. Guess what? You're not getting there at that time of arrival because that is based on you not stopping, not having traffic, driving the same speed for the next seven hours. That's what models do they're basing it all on everything right now okay and so we know things change when you go on a trip for a gps right you get into traffic you got to stop and go to the bathroom you got to get your combos and your twizzlers right you're going to stop and eat you're going to have to get gas you might run into bad weather you might get lost you might have a toll road there might be an accident construction and so by the time you get there you know all of a sudden it's not that precise time but you got a range of possibilities so in the long range when you got to look at models you don't look at a specific time we're looking at is it between the goalpost the storm is going to be somewhere between there with the highest probability of somewhere in there that's the way you've got to look at guidance so if you get caught up with someone telling you 10 days from now it's going to be in this exact spot they are lying to you i am telling you they are lying to you ignore them listen to sanity okay uh, so here's the track of this system we'll get into the steering currents one thing that's sh for sure with this system it is gonna slow down um, as we go towards the next couple of days the ridge of high pressure right there this is our big big driver this is the, the high here's our trough right the high is driving everything right now but that high pressure system is forecast to weaken by this weekend into early next week. Notice how the, the shades of brown and orange get weaker. So that means the storm doesn't get completely grabbed by this low pressure system over here. This is a trough, by the way. It doesn't get completely grabbed. So as this weakens and backs out, it gets into weak steering current. So it's likely gonna meander down there and kind of maybe even stall. It's definitely gonna slow down. That's why it's gonna be forever before this system gets here because it's just moving so, so slow. So you go into Friday of next week, the system is still out there, by the way, <laughs> okay? Let me back this up. This is Wednesday, okay? This is Thursday, this is Friday. So Friday, it's still west of Bermuda. And then we get into next weekend. So next Saturday, the 16th, there's our storm, okay? And again, this is just one model, but it gives you an idea. Could this get tugged back this way? Could it still go out to sea? Could it go into the Canadian Maritimes? Those are all possibilities. And if it stalls down here, what happens if it drifts west a little bit and then gets picked up? I, I think the stall is not a bad thing because big storms need to slow down to churn. And just the fact that it's stalling is a pretty good sign. So looking at all the guidance right now, I'm, I'm fairly confident we're looking at a storm that's going to turn to the north. The only scary part is I don't like playing chicken with freight trains. So everybody's got to pay attention to this storm for the next maybe seven to 10 days because we've got a long ways to go. So I will only post daily vlogs. I'm not going to do two a day because it's going to be Wednesday and you're going to be sick of me talking about it. So I may even not post an update tomorrow. We might take a day off because 
We really, the middle of next week is when game is on. And the thing to look out for, look for that churn to the north.